Luckily, Amy saved big at Amazon. Turns out with the right gear. Rufus rips. Eyes feeling dry? Tired? Stressed? Get a boost of moisture with BioTrue Hydration Boost Eye Drops for comfort throughout the day. They're preservative free, gentle, and made with naturally inspired ingredients. Stay BioTrue to your eyes. Okay, fly for an old day. Monday on ET, it's our Michael J. Fox exclusive. It's also Barmageddon with Blake Shelton. Why he's calling out his former voice fam. You're welcome, ET. We want to say a huge mahalo to the Sheridan Waikiki for a magical week. And of course, the generous and loving people of Hawaii for their hospitality. They always make it so special here. Now, we've got the band, Ane, and I'm also joined by Tiffany Tuban, the brand manager of Kohana Rum. You are debuting a new Mai Tai on Hawaiian Airlines that will be served there exclusively starting December 1st, right? Yeah, right. So, I'm happening now. Pitbulls make up a lot of the long-term residents here at the Converse Animal Shelter, and with recent dog attacks, that specific breed has come under scrutiny. Coming up, why the shelter says the owner's usually the problem, not the breed. As we look ahead to the upcoming weekend, plan for it to be cool and pretty cloudy with areas of rain increasing by Sunday. We'll get you the latest coming up in just a few. And online holiday shopping is in full swing, but did you know online retailers can collect your data? We're going to tell you about a new tool to make them stop. The News at 5 starts right now. But first, a scary scene outside of a local school, a heavier than normal law enforcement presence at Seguin High School today. This after two teenagers were arrested for allegedly threatening the school in a video on social media. Seguin police say 18 year old Isaiah Hyder and 19 year old Franklin Napier were identified as the teens in the video, both now being charged with one count each of making a terroristic threat. They were arrested last night, booked into the Guadalupe County Jail. Seguin police say to ensure students, faculty st and staff were safe. Extra officers positioned on the campus today. Law enforcement continues to encourage everyone that if you see something, say something. A Brackenridge High School student in custody after a weapon was found in their car on that campus. The principal sent parents a letter saying an anonymous tip received from the school's hotline that the student had a weapon in their car. Administrators and school police able to find and secure it with that student later detained. It's unclear what their motive was and whether they'll be facing criminal charges at this time. Pit bulls under intense scrutiny after being tied to several dog attacks here in San Antonio. Just this week, police say two of them mauled a man. As one local shelter tells us, though, our tells our Daniela Barra, these attacks continue to give pit bulls a bad rap. The Converse Animal Shelter gives animals a second chance. It's a no-kill shelter where Christian Colazzo has gotten to know each dog pretty well. Who's this? Uh, that is Asia. Colazzo says Asia has been with the shelter for about two years. Finding someone to adopt her is a challenge. Well, most of it is her shyness, but she has been looked over because she is pit mix. Many of the dogs here at the shelter are pit bulls or pit bull mixes. One of the longest tenured ones is Rain. She's been here for six years. Animal Care Services says American Staffordshire Terriers, known as pit bulls, are responsible for two deaths this year. ACS says the dogs responsible for mauling a man on the west side Wednesday night were also American Staffordshire Terriers. Has the increase of dog attacks in San Antonio impacted the number of pit bulls getting adopted here? Um, yeah, I, I, I believe so. ACS Director Shannon Sims says all the dogs involved in the attacks had owners. That kind of leads me back to, you know, uh, the the requirement for owner responsibility. Galazzo says a good owner has to build trust with time and patience. Do I squat down right now? Uh, yes. Okay. That would, even though she already right. seemed to come up to you a lot. When it comes to behavior, he says it's not fair to blame the breed. It definitely comes back to the owner and how you are going to act when it comes to a pit bull or an, an aggressive pit bull. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Starts with the owners. Still, there is now hitting the side of a building. Not enough to stop a driver that lost control of their vehicle, apparently. SAPD says they crashed into a parking lot barrier and then didn't stick around. All this happened about midnight last night in the 10,700 block of Perrin Bidal. That's close, close to Schertz Road. Officers tell us the driver lost control, sideswiped the Action Pond building, then crashed into a parking lot barrier. That's when the vehicle came to a stop. They say the driver got out and ran away from the scene. 
Police say there was no structural damage to that pawn shop. Fire investigators are looking into this house fire that broke out on West Summit near I-10 last night. Crews at the scene say the house was boarded up. The flames are able to spread to the second floor of the home before reaching the attic. No injuries were reported. Well, we had the cold front move in yesterday. Some decent rain last night and very early this morning. We've seen plenty of cloud cover this Friday and temperatures have been cooler than average because of that and the cooler air that's funneling into the region. 58 in Del Rio, 63 just off to the south there in Eagle Pass, 57 in Shirts, a little bit closer here to San Antonio, 59 in Lavernia, 55 in Bulverde, and 55 as well, stretching over to Bernie. If you're stepping out for any Friday evening plans, do take the extra layer with you. It will be chilly. The cloud cover sticks around. Temperatures will continue to slowly fall through the 50s. Wouldn't hurt to grab the umbrella, but just an isolated chance for some light rain or a few sprinkles currently in the forecast this evening. Tomorrow, chilly again. Highs near 60, cloudy and just isolated showers possible. That changes, though, into Sunday becoming more widespread, especially by Sunday afternoon. That widespread rain chance lingers through Sunday night and even into early Monday before we we start to see that taper off. The sunshine will finally pop back out and temperatures will start to warm by the middle of next week. We're going to time it out and get you all the details on those rain chances in a chilly weekend forecast. Those details coming in a little bit. I am enjoying the low humidity, Mia. Me too. Yeah, thank you. And news making headlines. Former President Donald Trump's classified documents trial start date will not be changed, at least for now. That's according to the presiding judge. Trump has repeatedly been pushing to move this federal criminal trial and others past the November 2024 presidential elections. Trump argues that the demands on the campaign trail and the complexities of his other legal cases should allow for a delay. The judge, who's a Trump appointee, says she will revisit the trial date in her court in early March. That month, his federal trial regarding his actions after the 2020 election is slated to begin. A lot of us could get I end up actually keeping more of our money when it comes to federal taxes next year. The IRS has just announced new tax brackets for 2024. From now on, the brackets show just how much taxpayers will owe on each part of their taxable income. Some of the changes will affect the standard deduction for single filers and married couples filing jointly, the alternative minimum tax, and the income threshold. The agency boosted the income thresholds for each bracket to account for inflation. This means some people could benefit by being able to remain in a lower tax bracket. The changes will apply to returns filed in the year 2025. Congress now in recess in observance of Veterans Day, but a day out of the office, not necessarily a day off. Members have just one week to pass legislation to fund the U.S. government and avoid a shutdown. Deja vu, considering just a little more than a month ago, the country was in the same position and a limited bipartisan compromise led to then House Speaker Kevin McCarthy being voted out. Gloria Pasmino with more on where the shutdown talks now stand. It feels like Groundhog Day in Washington. In just a few days, the federal government is once again at risk of shutting down. As Congress remains at an impasse over passing a budget. The objective is to find compromise and advance the ball forward. In the immediate, we need to pass a CR to keep the government funded and open. The stopgap bill, known as a continuing resolution, or CR, passed at the end of September with bipartisan support, extending funding through November 17. But the compromise came at the expense of then-Speaker Kevin McCarthy's leadership President position, as far-right members of his Republican caucus revolted. I've moved to vacate the chair. In the first big test of his leadership, House Speaker Mike Johnson is tasked with navigating the same quagmire McCarthy faced, getting his fractured Republican caucus to coalesce around legislation that will also pass the democratically controlled Senate. If he does decide to pass a continuing resolution, that's going to upset enough members, given his small majority, that his speakership will be questioned. But even if Congress avoids a shutdown this time, some fear the continued dysfunction in Washington puts the country at risk. Whether it be over the debt limit or electing a speaker to the House or government shutdown, one of these times uh, we're just not going to be able to pull it together and uh, we're going to you know, do a lot of damage to you know our economy, to our markets, uh, to our standing in the world. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. Mentioned Veterans Day. Well, today the U.S. Marine Corps celebrating its 248th birthday. 
It's established on November 10th, 1775 in the Tun Tavern in Philadelphia by the Continental Congress. In World War I, German troops called them devil dogs for the Marines' ferocious tenacity. And as the Marines celebrate the founding of the Corps, the entire nation set to honor all our men and women who serve and have served. Veterans Day is tomorrow. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower renamed Armistice Day to Veterans Day. That was after the Korean War ended. And veterans in San Antonio seeking a degree at Northwest Vista College will soon have a new place on campus that focuses on their successful transition into civilian life. Right now, the campus's new veteran center under construction. Our camera's actually given a sneak peek at the new design for that center, though, designed to give an outdoor indoor experience. It also has a dog park where veterans can take their service dogs. The college's president says they took input from their student veterans to come up with a layout and environment to help vets come together to help each other accomplish their post military goals. Two of the school's veterans like what they see. When you're surrounded by other veterans like they will be here pretty soon, it's going to give them a better environment and a better attitude to actually come to school and finish school. We've got a lot of people that come out of the military uh, that have served and want to continue to serve this community and I think that's important and the first step is transition. And it'll give them a place a little bit away from the hubbub of the campus um, where if they need a break, this is a place for them to come. The state-of-the-art facility will replace the Desert Willow Veterans Center as the go-to place for veterans to learn about and access resources geared for veterans and their families. And right now on KSET.com, you can learn more about how a local Iraqi war veteran is moving forward in civilian life by opening a brand new business. You can also find out about all the Veterans Day promotions and discounts, events available to veterans and active duty military. Just go to KSET.com topic military. And from now through December 12th, you can donate a pair of new shoes or socks to any of the seven SAPD substations. It's all part of the Share the Shoes campaign. Every donation will be given to a child in need of new shoes through Zapatos. They're looking for shoes and socks size 9 toddler to 5 adult. You can donate at any SAPD substation. We have all this information on KSAT.com if you'd like more information. Check out traffic on this Friday. How about let's go to 281 at almost and you can see a couple of cars pulled off to the side there. Don't know if it was a fender bender or a vehicle just having some sort of mechanical problems. But again, this is 281 at almost a couple cars off to the side, but it is not slowing down traffic at this moment. Coming up using online store accounts and apps make shopping easy and convenient. But do you know what specific information they collect about you? when you sign up and every time you use your account. We're going to break down what companies could do with your information and tell you how you can opt out. As you log on or sign in to do your holiday shopping, it's not just your money that businesses are getting. There's also a lot of your personal data. Many companies collect it, even sell it. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It shows us a new app that helps you take control of your privacy. Chances are you do this. Shop online. It's convenient, but sometimes there's a trade-off. If you have an account with an e-tailer or if you use apps and sites that require logging in, some companies might keep files on you and even sell your information to data brokers, which are businesses that collect your personal data and sell it to other parties. So why might that matter? The problem is you don't know what these companies are doing with your data. Some might have location data on you, which could hypothetically be used to see where you worship, where you protest, or who else you spend your time with. It's time consuming to contact every single business you deal with and ask them to stop. That's where this comes in. Consumer Reports new app called Permission Slip. The app tells you how more than 100 companies use your personal information. And if you want, the app will request the company stop selling your data or delete it. So I downloaded the Permission Slip app. It's free and it's pretty simple to use. You open it up and it has a bunch of companies you swipe through. You click on one and it will show you what data they collect, whether it's your social media, your location, or your recent purchases. 
CR says most big companies will honor those requests to keep your private stuff private anyway. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. The time for No Shave November underway and some of us at KSAT growing out our beards for a good cause. We are raising money for 12 different cancer foundations. If you'd like to donate, we'd sure appreciate it. Just scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Last year, by the way, KSAT raised more than $30,000 to benefit cancer research, treatment, and prevention. That's why we're letting it grow. Live look outside. It is 58 degrees out there. And uh, Mia, I told you, I, I I don't mind the cold weather. It's not that cold, but you know, we need the rain yep. and I'm happy about the no humidity. Yes, I know. And I just checked dew points are about five to 15 degrees lower than they were just 24 hours ago. So you can definitely feel it is a little bit more comfortable outside when you do step out. But yes, it is chilly, but we're not seeing really a whole lot of rain in around the San Antonio area, at least as of right now. Here's a look wide view at your authority radar. Pretty quiet here in the Alamo City and surrounding areas. There are a few showers near junction as well as off to our southeast near the Victoria area and of course closer to the Gulf Coast. All of that slowly working its way to the north and the east. We're just going to keep an isolated chance for rain in the forecast. If you are stepping out for any Friday evening plans, do take the umbrella or the rain poncho with you just in case you briefly need to use it. About a 20% potential through about 8 p.m. and then we'll slightly bump it up to a 30% chance as we head into the overnight hours. And we're not finished with the rain chances just yet. Only a 20% potential for most of Veterans Day tomorrow, but into Sunday, it looks to become more widespread, especially into the afternoon, evening hours, and that's actually going to linger into Monday of next week as well. You can also see what your temperatures are going to do because of that and the added cloud cover in place. Chilly mornings, low 50s expected here in San Antonio. I think we briefly managed to climb into the low 60s tomorrow afternoon, but with the rain increasing on Sunday. Right now it looks like forecast high temperatures may struggle to hit that 60 degree mark. So you are going to want the extra layer out there as well. Let's talk about those increasing rain chances though. Planning out your weekend plans. Here's the latest version of Futurecast depicting what the radar could look like here over the next couple of days. Again, this evening, eight, nine o'clock, just isolated showers possible. Very, very light rain. A few sprinkles there. We're pretty quiet throughout the majority of the day tomorrow. 7 a.m. A few isolated showers possible off to our south. I think the better chances Saturday of finding some of those light showers look to remain along and just south of the Highway 90 corridor for us here in San Antonio, about a 20 to 30 percent potential that continues as you head into Saturday evening and Saturday night. Once again, best chance south of the Alamo City, all this activity working in from the southwest and slowly working its way farther up to the north northeast. All right, that takes takes us into our Sunday though. You can see already by lunchtime as we start to see some upper level energy approach the Lone Star State starts to become more widespread near Uvalde, Catula, even near Eagle Pass and Del Rio by lunchtime. And that's going to gradually work its way farther up to the north into Sunday afternoon as well as Sunday night. There's that area of low pressure that's going to be approaching the state of Texas from the west, just allowing some of that upper level energy to combine with the moisture sure in place, keeping that rain chance going into Monday morning. So the Monday morning drive is likely going to be messy as well. But then by Monday evening, that low pressure system starts to depart off to our east and rain chances taper off. Temperature wise, you can see we've got plenty of cloud cover still out there. 58 degrees right now over at San Antonio International. Tomorrow morning, it is going to be chilly out there. 50s for most of us, closer to that 50 degree mark. The farther north and west that you go up into the hill country. 56 degrees by 9 a.m., 59 by lunchtime. Because we've got the cloud cover in place, temperatures don't look to warm too efficiently throughout the day. But again, we are expecting that forecast high to top off near about 61 degrees by 4 p.m. tomorrow, a little bit cooler Sunday and into Monday as those rain chances increase. Then after that, if you're looking for some more sunshine, we'll look to see that return on Tuesday. And because of that, those temperatures crank back up into the 70s by the middle of next week. Steve could be a rainy Sunday and Monday, though. Yes, so right. grab the umbrella for sure. Thanks, Mia. By the way, I'm happy to report I saw most of our crews going out to cover football. 
Bring you a rain jacket just in case, Larry. You know, I can't find my umbrella. I have one. I'm serious. I've looked all over for it. But, you know, nothing's going to mess up his hair. Well, I, I know. That's what I was going to say. Hey, our game of the week <laughs> <laughs> will feature Veterans Memorial taking on Burbank tonight. We got a preview of this big game coming up. And the Spurs will start their in-season tournament tonight against the T-Wolves. Coming up. Like water off a duck's back. There you go. Yeah. The Burbank Bulldogs taking on the Veterans Memorial Patriots is the big game in our big game playoff coverage tonight. Burbank is 9-1 and and having its best season since 1978. And the Dogs are looking for their first playoff win in program history. Now the Patriots enter this Class 5A Division II matchup with a 6-4 and four mark. And they have one of the best backs around in Ohio State pledge, James Peoples, who's missed several games this season due to injuries. That they have a really strong running back, strong offense, big, big, very big team. So we're going to have to give it everything we have against them. A playoff win never been won in Burbank history. It's played here. Home game is our opportunity to get that, that win. Well, we got to see it as we're playing in our backyard. So we're going to have everyone here to come support us. You know, uh, they're, they're a really good football team. Um, and, you know, our coaches and us, we're going to prepare very well for them and just stick to the game plan and we got it. It's been very special throughout uh, being been able to play with all these seniors, knowing that um, this may be our last time playing together. So I find it uh, very special to keep on playing with them throughout the playoffs. Veterans Memorial versus Burbank is our game of the week tonight at 7, and it's one of 13 playoff games we're scheduled to get tonight. And the BGC road trip will see Lago Vista face Divine at Matador Stadium in Seguin. And the final stop will see Cedar Park at New Braunfels Canyon. Highlights tonight on the Night Beat. After a tough two-game road trip, the Spurs are home tonight to face the Minnesota Timberwolves. This marks the Spurs' first in-season tournament game. Now, all 30 teams will compete in group play with the top teams from each of the six groups and two wildcard teams advancing to the knockout rounds. And the Spurs, well, they are ready to go. For sure. Yeah, I mean, just exciting to be back at home, obviously, uh, after a couple of tough ones on the road. Just to be back in front of our home fans and obviously a little bit bigger of a stage tonight playing in the for the tournament in season tournament game. So it'll be a good test for us. They're playing really well. You know, we approach every game the same, but you know, obviously it's a, a different type of game. It's the first time um, for us, but also in the NBA. And so there's definitely a little more juice here. Um, you know, I expect it to spike up even more when we get there, see the floor and everything as well. Spurs and T-Wolves will play tonight at 7. We'll have highlights on the night beat. Don't get me wrong, I want the Spurs to win, but I also do kind of want to see that floor, like, in action. Yeah. I know it's divisive. It is, for sure. There's some people that, you know, have different opinions. <laughs> yeah, some people really like it, some don't. I don't know if I know anybody in the middle. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm undecided. <laughs> we'll be right back.